Cheers, ladies and gentlemen and sons. Welcome to Son of a Tech, and I have good news. After the single failed D-Lid on my 3770K, I got to work practicing on two more CPUs, not only a Sandy Bridge 2400i5, but also an Ivy Bridge 3450i5, and I did it without any issues at all. I'm super stoked. I even actually did end up using super glue, which you'll see in this time lapse here in a second. I just used a little, little tiny bit and was very strategic in the placement and the lid went on. Now let's talk about some benefits. If you're doing the Sandy Bridge, like a 2000 series CPU, there's a little to no benefit of delidding because the CPU or the IHS, the integrated heatsink, is um, soldered on to that die. And so it is harder to pop off, but you can still do it with the rocket tool without doing any damage to it, which was pretty cool. It just took a lot longer to clean all of that uh, off. You had to soak it for some time and then just get in there and scrub it while trying not to nick the PCB in the process. I did use a little bit of a razor blade as well to get the big stuff off, and I used the razor blade on the back of the IHS. Now, after all that work, so A, it's a lot of work for Sandy Bridge, and B, the performance benefit's not that great. The package, or the total package, after five minutes in IDA 64 stress test with FPU, keep in mind, only showed about a two degree change in temperature. Now, of course, these are gonna be a lot cooler. You could maybe get a little bit better on something like a 2500 or 2600K, but I don't know if it's really worth going ahead and trying. I don't think it's going to exponentially increase your overvoltage capabilities and therefore increase your overclocking capabilities at all. Now, Ivy Bridge, whole other story. And this is because they use thermal paste between the IHS and the die. So once we got the 3450, 3450 D-lidded, and we went ahead and cleaned up the die and cleaned all the glue off. Now, this is another key point. Use, just use your fingernail to clean the glue off. It's gonna take some time, but at the same time, it's not gonna damage anything. I definitely wouldn't take a razor blade to it in case you get unsteady and nick that PCB and end up having a dead chip like I have with my 3770K, so keep that in mind. And other than that, though, if you go ahead and clean that off and you do apply the coolerbatory, which is the liquid alloy metal, which is conductive. So you, when you do this, make sure you put scotch tape around the PCB so you don't get any on there because then it could obviously short the chip out and you don't want to do that. That's terrible. But if you do get that on, you get everything running. On the 3450, which is not a K-series and is kind of a lower power consumption chip than say something like the 3770K, we still saw upwards of 15 degrees Celsius on a single core difference. And actually on the entire package, we had 13 degrees Celsius drop in temperatures. Now that's pretty huge. You're talking about being able to bump up like 0.1 volt or even more than that possibly and not, and not go over the temperatures that, that you were at earlier with whatever overclock you have. So it does increase overclock potential quite a bit. Now that obviously begs the question with the heat in Cabby Lake, what is realistically the point at which we're gonna be able to overclock that chip if we're not being blocked by heat? Which is the question I'm going to answer here shortly, hopefully in the next video. Now, another note about uh, the Cabby Lake processor is I kind of got a below average to average CPU. Mine only overclocks to 4.8 gigahertz without having some serious issues. I do have two bodies though that both got to five or even 5.2 and they seem to be stable and running well. However, they are suffering from some thermal throttling at the top end there. So I do want to try and obviously I'm trying on all my chips first, I also have the 6700K that we'll probably take a look at delating and see what kind of performance we can get 
out of that. But in the meantime, enjoy this time lapse of me deleting an i5-3450 and enjoy some screenshots, of course, of hardware monitor. So that's all she wrote, folks. If you have any questions about the deleting process, please leave them in the comment section below and hopefully some of the community or myself can help you out if you're looking into doing it. The biggest thing I would say is be patient. And that's going to wrap it up. Until next time, I'll see you next Tuesday.